Gary Realm here again for HCL Technologies. In this video, I'm going to show you a different aspect of the repair engine that's in Domino 10. In the last video, we looked at how Domino could do an auto repair to, to maintain symmetry across cluster servers so that um, the, the same set of files is guaranteed to exist on each of the servers in the cluster. That's very handy, like if you have a situation where you provision a new user and put their mail file on a certain server, um, but don't remember to, for example, create new replicas on all of the cluster mates, that will automatically happen. The repair mechanism will just do that in the next time it, it does a scan of the server. But there's another facet to the repair um, mechanism, which is uh, the repair of corrupted files. So the auto repair, remember, is looking for just missing files. It's only checking the existence of files. It doesn't actually open the files, and it doesn't open them because if you have a server with thousands of files, you don't want to scan every few minutes, like opening thousands of files to see if they're corrupt, right? So this mechanism is subtly different. What happens with the corrupt file repair mechanism is that anytime a database is opened, if it's determined to be corrupt, the repair mechanism will try to see if repair, I'm sorry, if fix up can fix the problem locally, because it's always better to fix the problem on the server if possible than it is to go across the wire to another server. But if it turns out that the server is, I'm sorry, the database is, um, you know, severely corrupted and can't be repaired by fix-up, then repair will kick in and do the right thing. So if we go back to our Fender server that we were using in the previous example, and we list the files here, again, we, in the last demo, we added the mail three and four directory. So we have quite a few databases that are being monitored and there are no missing files. They're all present and accounted for, which is great. But for this demo, what we wanna do is we wanna actually um, intentionally corrupt one of these databases. And I'm gonna pick this sports, my team, NSF. I have a little script here. There's a utility that I can run, which will corrupt the file. And no, we do not ship this. And what we'll do is we'll come out to a command prompt and we'll say on the Fender server, I want to run this. And it has just corrupted the header of the file. So the file is no longer even recognizable as an NSF. It's sitting on disk, it's there. The, the auto repair mechanism won't fix it because it's there, um, but it's not usable and that's not good. So what we need to do now to kick in the dynamic repair of a corrupt mail file or excuse me, database any, of any sort, is we need to open it. And one handy way of being able to do that is Repair also has a feature called Repair Repl Hist, which actually goes out and reads the replication history for all of the copies of a file um, that's being monitored by Repair. So I'm gonna show you the corrupt file in a second, but just to give you a flavor for what this command does, we run it on some arbitrary file, you can see that it went out got the replication history for each of the copies, compares them all. So now we want to do that for our sports, my teams, NSF. And again, the purpose of this is just to force the database to be opened. So you can see that it immediately came up and it said, it's unavailable, the file is not a database. Hey, I tried to open it, it's totally corrupt, can't be fixed, so I am dynamically, and this repair tells you who, who initiated the repair, it's gonna dynamically be repaired and it's been successfully repaired. So now if I rerun the command which forced it to open here, the replication history, there it is, it's intact. Part of the repair process incidentally is to fix up the replication history of the various copies to minimize uh, replication overhead. So I do wanna show you one other thing about this um, dynamic repair of corrupt mail files, which is that when we do this, we leave the old file intact. So if we look at the sports folder, you can see that when we detected that it was corrupt, we renamed the original database, NSF file, to uh, a .pd underscore bad and a date timestamp. And what the PD is, is it stands for pending delete. So this file, we don't think it's usable in any way. We don't think that you could get anything useful out of it, we couldn't, right? But, you know, we are gonna leave it here for some period of time so that you can forensically examine it if you want to, you can scroll it away somewhere if you think you could do something with it. Um, and then there is a new server task 
called DB cleanup, which you can configure here. Um, and you can tell it, I want to purge all the PD files that are greater than X days old. Um, right now, you have to configure it with a notes any, but in beta, it will actually be rolled into the configuration screen that we looked at earlier, where we defined the repair um, folders to be monitored. And in my case, it says every 28 days. So this file, this bad file, will actually sit out here on disk for 28 days. And then in 28 days, um, it will actually just be deleted. So um, if you want to do something with it in the meantime, you could not run the DB temp cleanup and, and manually go off and do some process to monitor those. Um, or you can just do it within 28 days or set the interval to whatever works in your environment. So again, I hope you found this interesting, and we will have more videos for you later. Thank you.